but I want to give time to the man who helped me know, Annie, you define you. You have gifts, don't hide them. And that was just some of the best advice that I needed at the time when I needed it most. And I give credit to Dr. Dustin Bain for that. Um, he's had his finger on the pulse of overall holistic wellness care for over 15 years. His passion, and when I say passion, just wait, he's got some, for helping other people achieve their health goals and understanding the fundamentals of true health has led him to create numerous community events, talks, and programs, all that support wellness. So he um, has done some really amazing things, including um, pro um, providing a, a program, a wellness program called Rebuild the Temple, which I have been participating in and have really appreciated, as well as he is a life coach and um, focuses on his program called Emergence, which is fabulous as well. And most likely, Dr. Bain, I would not have this book or this program today had it not been for you and your coaching. So I want to welcome you and ask you to take it away. Thank you, Manny. Are you here? <laughs> I said all those nice things about you. I hope you're here. I just tuned in. Go ahead. No. And I, I want to say thank you to you, specifically, Annie, for, being, for presenting this for everybody and all the presenters. Everything has been incredible. Um, it, it goes to show that you don't need the big name people to be to share their stories to have an impact. Everybody has a story. It's just being willing to grab the mic and step on stage. So kudos to everybody. Um, my plan for my little thing I'm doing here, I guess, is... Uh, I want to share with you guys a, a, a message that I, I've shared very few times, probably less than three times publicly, um, of where the You Define You message came from and where the inspired nation that I kind of began all stemmed from. And the day was, uh, it was I can, May 7, 2008. I was literally inside my uh, in-law's dairy barn. I was bending down to pick up a can. And in this time, you have to realize that we had literally just moved back from Arizona, um, had no idea what we were going to do, living in their basement, and I was picking up this can, not because I enjoyed picking up trash, I was picking up this can to take to town, to take to the recycling bin, to get money, to put money, gas in the car. So, this was a, this, when I was down there, literally, it was the darkest time of my life. I, uh, best way to say it. I had thoughts of I'm worth more to my family, more dead than alive right now. Um, there's other things that you should, that you've messed up on that you shouldn't be here where you're at right now, but you were. So six months prior to being in the, in the barn, um, it was in a practice and this looks lay a lot of this out for you in a practice that uh, was the largest chiropractic practice in Arizona. Um, we helped a lot of people, had a lot of fun. We were, myself and the chiropractor were brought up to other conferences to do presentations on how we did what we did, how we got the results we did. Had a blast, had a great time, enjoyed everything about it, grew up to this massive, bubbling, fun house, fun of just creation, helping people. And in a matter of probably two weeks, the rug went whoosh, right from under our feet and everything was gone. Like, gone. And it wasn't because of something that happened. It wasn't because of something that occurred in the environment. It wasn't anything of that. It was because we were trying to live our life based upon someone else's vision for us and our practice. We had coaches, we had mentors who were telling us one simple word, one word, and all of you have heard this word over and over and over again. And it was this, more. You need more, you need more money. You need more patience, you need more time. You need more. And when I heard that word in my head, all I heard was less. Less time with my family, less date nights, less time with my kids, less time going to the things that I wanted to do. It was just more. So anytime you try living your life through someone else's vision, it will be destroyed. I guarantee at some point it will be destroyed. So here I am in the barn, 
bawling. I think tears are coming out of my ears. That may have been sweaty. It was a hot day. And I picked up this can, bawling. And if you've ever had an out-of-body experience, I had an out-of-body experience that day. Picking up this can, and I'm literally, I think I had two people having. I was bending down to pick up this can, and I was also in the corner of this barn, looking down upon myself, picking up this can ball. And I heard a voice. I don't know where the voice, I know where the voice came from. But I don't know where the voice came from. And it said two words. Define it. No idea what the hell that meant. So I finished, grabbed the rest of the cans, took the cans to the recycling bin, got the money, put the gas in the car, came back, went down to the basement at my in-laws house, grabbed a sheet of paper, one of the old school ones that have the, the metal binders and I'm writing and I wrote on the top in capital letters, define it, exclamation point, underline, underline, and I just sat there and stared at it for about two hours. Like, what the hell does that mean? What does that, define what? What am I supposed to define? And I just started writing, family, faith, business, health, finances, relationships, marriage, and I just started writing my own definitions to what each of these words meant. I'd never done this before. Everything had been based upon what society or my mentors or my leaders or people that influenced me had told me what that was the definition of success. I had never sat down and wrote down what the definition of success was in those areas. If you haven't done this, this is assignment number one. Take a piece of paper on the type, write, define it, and then start writing, how do you define success in your life? in your fitness, in your relationships, marriage. What is it? Because if you're not, if you don't have something you're going towards, you're just gonna be sitting there floating in the water. Where are you aiming? And make sure it is yours. Um, during that time, I also had a lot of uncertainty and fear, obviously. And I've also found that fear, its favorite song to sing is called What If, right? You know what I mean? Right? It has a system of, you know, what if, what if you, what if you did that and nobody liked it? Ew. What if, what if you asked that person out and said no? What if, what if you wore that and people just laughed at you and thought that was just horrendous? Who gives a shit? I'm just, I'm sorry I broke the barrier right there. I'm just, seriously, who cares? You define what you want to have happen in your life based upon the definitions that you set forth. Okay? You also have to understand that you have to all uh, do something that a lot of people are too scared to do, and it's this. Um, you have to kill a part of you. Uh, we do, we're doing a Rebuild the Temple program uh, currently, and the message that I gave you a couple weeks ago was, there is no crucifixion, that, there is no resurrection without first a crucifixion. Something has to die first. Preston, you mentioned it perfectly. The old you had to leave. If you don't like the results that you're getting currently in your life, something has to change. And nobody's going to change it but you. If you see yourself going into the kitchen and grabbing that extra, extra, I don't know, bag of cookies, you're going to have to kill that person that does that. You're going to have to set some new, new rules, some new boundaries, um, some new standards of what you're going to be accepting of what's possible. Because otherwise, that story just keeps coming around and around and around. I, I remember when I was a kid, um, you guys remember record players? Some of you maybe do. I had the big old record, like the big one. I think it was 72 or 40, I don't know, the big one. And my favorite song, you're going to laugh at this, my favorite one was the Oak Ridge Brothers, or Oak Ridge Boys. They had this song called Elvira, right? Elvira, yeah, y'all know that song? Okay, so I'm listening, that was my favorite song. And I remember taking the record, putting it on the record player, and it go around and go around and be like, it gets to the part, Elvira. But then it just kept going, Elvira, Elvira, Elvira. I was like, what? what is wrong? And we took the record off and we looked and there had actually been a scratch in the record player. So that just kept going along and along. And until you identify where that, what that scratch is in your life that keeps forcing you to relive the exact same scenario, you're going to keep hearing this message over and over and over until you learn that lesson. That's the rule. Um, that's step two. Step three. This is my favorite quote of all time. 
Pastor Stephen Furtick, good stuff. Stop comparing your behind the scenes to everyone else's highlight reel. Stop comparing your behind the scenes to everyone else's highlight reel. What does that mean? That means social media. What are you seeing on social media? You're seeing everyone's highlight reel and you're looking at it with, with curlers in your hair and you know this afro that I got going because I can't get my hair cut because we're clothing's closed. We got a whole big hot mess going on. That's why I got to wear a hat. Sorry, everybody. But you're seeing all that and you're like, God, in my life, I guess maybe it does suck. I'm not sure. I'm, not, I'm really not. I do. And you start to second guess. And that what if scenario starts to go on in your head. And then you get more fear. And then you just, the cycle starts to happen. again. What you should look at and realize is that if you look at a set of keys, every little notch on a key, this specific key allows me to get into my house. This specific key allows me to get into the post office. This specific key allows me to get into my clinic. Each key has specific nodges, specific grooves that allow it to get into something. They're unique. They're no different than you. This key is no different than you. Every job you've hated, everything that you've ever done that you can't stand, know why it ever happened in your life, it's forming a groove. Everything that you've succeeded at, it's forming a groove. Everything that you've thought about that like, I don't know why this keeps happening in my life. It's either a lesson you haven't learned or you haven't identified that you have a gift within you that needs to come out. Annie recognized it. Danielle recognized it. Preston, everybody has recognized it. But are you bringing it out to the world or is it staying inside? One of the, one of the messages that I heard once was, uh, stop trying to get on everyone else's stage and start building your own. You have a gift. You have a message. All of us do. All of us have different stories. That's where the cuts are different and go to different things. You have to be the one to walk in and put it in and turn. Next thing, after all you do that, find your tribe. Identify where you need to get accountability. And sometimes they just show up. Sometimes it can be a child. Sometimes it can be the person that you just meet at the store says something like, whoa, what the heck? That was, that, where did I hear that message from? What just happened? Find a tribe that's going to help connect you to a purpose bigger than you. Living here is not about you. Sorry for those egomaniacs in the room. It's not about you. It's about what can you bring to the world and help somebody else. What's the gift that you can help them unveil? We have a very cool tribe going right now at the Inspire Living Nation that is kicking ass. Um, I, I, was, uh, I, I was a part of a coaching group for a while and I was, ha I was getting frustrated because I didn't feel like things were happening and I wasn't growing and it was, and it was all in my head, I got that. But I had a one-on-one -on -one with like the head leader of this group and I said, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not really growing anymore. I said, I've kind of, I feel like I plateaued and peaked. And he, and he paused and he said, I'm going to be honest with you. And I said, thank you. And he said, uh, there's nothing new that anyone's going to ever teach you. You don't need a coach. You need a community. Create a community, build a community based upon the values that you're bringing in and with the definitions of success that all of you seem to have similarities. And it's not gonna be the exact same, but if you have similarities, that's where compounding starts to happen and growth starts to happen within everybody. Uh, if you need help, like if you're, if, you're, if you're me, bending down to pick up that can and you're like, this is, I don't even know what to do. Ask for help. It's okay to ask for help. Lose your pride. Right? My son the other day was up, I told this story a few weeks ago. Um, he was in his room, I was sleeping, all I heard was screaming. Like just, ah, in the middle of the night, like 11.52. I know because I looked at the clock and I said 11.52. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I went upstairs and opened their door and he's just standing there screaming. I'm like, buddy, buddy, what's up? What's up? Because I can't get out of the room. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I can't find the door. It took him to scream. It took him announcing like, I need help for someone to come in and help him. Because otherwise he was just going along the wall. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I, uh, if you need help, reach out to Annie. Reach out to any of these people on here. We're all here to help. We're in this together. Granted, the stuff out there might suck, but I don't think so. I think everything that's going on right now is happening for a purpose. 
It is creating and forcing you to go into silent mode. It's forcing you to go into a peaceful time to have the ability to grab a journal and write on the top of it, freaking defiant. And there's two people on here who are gonna do it. Either you're gonna do it or you won't. And it's not because all of this information by all of these presenters wasn't amazing. It goes back to you. So I challenge you, I encourage you, define success in all levels for you. What is it? Thank you, Amy. I thought that was short, long. I don't even know where I am at. I, am at. <laughs> I think that deserves an amen, Dusty. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Um, just so amazing. I, I'm always inspired. And thank you for being vulnerable enough to share your story as well. Um, it, it's just so powerful.